Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Getting Started with the FSW ACLR Measurements. This presentation provides a brief overview on how to make measurements of ACLR, or adjacent channel leakage ratio, on Roding Schwartz FSW series spectrum analyzers. This presentation assumes a basic understanding of ACLR. If you're unfamiliar with ACLR, or if you'd like a brief review, you might want to watch the presentation, Understanding Spectrum Analyzers, ACLR, before beginning this presentation. ACLR is one of the standard spectrum measurements on the FSW and is supported on all FSW series analyzers. Channels can be configured using predefined standards or can be manually defined by the user. Similarly, measurement and display parameters can be either automatically or manually configured. In addition to typical ACLR tests with a single transmit channel, the FSW also supports measurements on multiple, independent, non-contiguous signals or carriers. This is sometimes referred to as an MSR, or multi-standard radio measurement. It's also worth noting that a one-channel ACLR measurement, that is, measuring only the transmit channel, is how basic channel power measurements can be performed on the FSW. To make a channel power or ACLR measurement, press the Measure Hard key, and then select Channel Power ACLR from the list of available power measurements. This is a standard spectrum measurement and does not require any additional hardware, software, or license code. Here we see the main ACLR user screen. Configuration settings are accessed via the buttons on the right. The default view shows both the graphical results as well as numerical results beneath them. In the remainder of this presentation, we'll explain how to configure and interpret these settings and displays. Let's start with channel configuration. Most ACLR measurements are based on standards, and the FSW provides predefined standards for many wireless communications technologies, including cellular standards such as 5GNR and LTE, Wi-Fi or 802.11 standards, and various land mobile radio and other standards. These are selected by pressing CP ACLR standard and then selecting from the list of available standards. Choosing a standard in this way automatically sets the relevant measurement parameters. For example, channel bandwidth and spacing, resolution bandwidth, detector type, etc. The FSW also allows users to edit, create, and save or load their own standards. The Channel Power ACLR Config button is used to access the channel settings, which in turn are used to define the channel counts, bandwidth and spacing, for both the transmit channel as well as the adjacent or alternate channels. Setting the adjacent channel count to zero can be used to perform a single channel power measurement. Channel counts, bandwidth and spacing are configured automatically when a predefined standard is selected, but these can also be manually configured. Let's look at some examples. A very common channel count configuration is one transmit channel and two adjacent channels. Note that the number of adjacent channels is the same both above and below the transmit channel. For example, if we set the number of adjacent channels to four, there will be nine total channel powers measured, four channels above the transmit channel, and four channels below the transmit channel. In many cases, the transmit and adjacent channels have the same bandwidths, but these can be individually configured. Here, the transmit channel has a width of 19.08 MHz, but the immediately adjacent channels have a bandwidth of 15 MHz, and the alternate channels have a bandwidth of only 12 MHz. Channel spacing refers to the distance of the adjacent channels from the transmit channel. In this example, the centers of the first adjacent channels are 25 MHz from the center of the transmit channel. The centers of the second adjacent, or alternate channels, are 55 MHz from the center of the transmit channel. It's important to remember that spacing is always measured from the center of the transmit channel to the center of the adjacent channel. Channel powers can also be tested against user-defined limits, that is, against maximum power values. This is configured under the Limits tab, 
and these limits can be specified as either relative powers in dBc or absolute powers in dBm. If the measured channel power exceeds the limit, the value is displayed in red and marked with an asterisk. Next, let's go over general settings, which are also under the ACLR Setup tab. These are used to define measurement and display settings. ACLR mode is used to select between absolute power measurements in dBm or relative power measurements in dBc. When making relative measurements, the reference channel for these measurements must be indicated. By default, this is the transmit channel. The displayed power units can be changed to dBm per hertz or dBm per megahertz. And the power mode can be configured to either calculate and display ACLR for each sweep or trace, or it can be changed to max hold, which will retain the highest measured value over multiple sweeps. In addition to the settings we just looked at, there are additional settings that can be optimized for increased measurement accuracy. These can be accessed via the main GUI or from the ACLR setup menu. Enabling noise cancellation removes the inherent noise of the FSW and improves dynamic range. Sweep time can be increased to improve the reproducibility of the measurement results, but this will also increase the overall measurement time. But the most important of these is Adjust Settings. Pressing Adjust Settings will automatically optimize settings such as span, resolution bandwidth, etc. for optimal measurement speed and accuracy. There are, however, some recommendations if these parameters are configured manually. Span should be set wide enough to cover all channels, plus an additional recommended margin of 10%. As with most other measurements, resolution bandwidth involves a trade-off between speed and accuracy. For ACLR measurements, a resolution bandwidth of 1-4% to of the channel bandwidth is recommended. Note that some standards specify the resolution bandwidth to be used when measuring ACLR. Video bandwidth should be set to at least three times the resolution bandwidth. Setting video bandwidth too low can cause the measured power to also be too low. Since ACLR is a power measurement, the RMS detector should be used, although the sample detector may provide acceptable results in some situations. And finally, Trace averaging should be avoided, since this too can cause measurement results to be artificially low. After channels and settings have been completed, the ACLR measurement will run automatically. The default results include the transmit channel power, as well as the absolute or relative power in each of the defined channels on a per-channel basis. Note that in the graphical display, the heights of the colored bars correspond to the measured powers for each channel. The results summary also shows the bandwidth and offset, that is the spacing, for each channel, and as mentioned earlier, any configured limit violations will be indicated in red. Let's end with a brief summary. ACLR and channel power are standard spectrum measurements supported on all Rodian Schwartz FSW series signal and spectrum analyzers. The most important part of ACLR measurements is channel configuration, which can be done automatically using one of the FSW's predefined standards or by means of a user-defined standard. The accuracy of ACLR or channel power measurements can be improved by enabling noise cancellation and or by adjusting the sweep time. Furthermore, the FSW's Adjust Settings feature will automatically optimize spectrum settings such as span, resolution and video bandwidth, etc., based on the divine channels. These can, of course, also be manually configured if needed. And finally, the channel power or ACLR measurement results are displayed in both graphical and numerical formats, with powers given either as relative or absolute values. This concludes our presentation, Getting Started with the FSW ACLR Measurements. If you'd like to learn more about ACLR, other spectrum measurements, or spectrum analyzers from Rodian Schwartz, please see the links in the video description. Thanks for watching.